really thrilled to be here. Uh, I'll just say that right off the, off the bat. Uh, among this ensemble of extraordinary thinkers and doers and creators, um, and uh, I, I think the conversation, I think, is, is changing, and I think you are changing it. What we're talking about is not just about being creative, making something beautiful, uh, provocative, interesting, or different. It's about the economy. Um, it's, it's important. Uh, and what, and what, uh, what we're finding in looking at creativity in Washington is that it really reinforces all the other things that we're trying to do. Uh, it supports the revitalization of emerging neighborhoods. We use arts and creative uses to brand and, and, and create place in, in, uh, in, in neighborhoods. We enliven the street with active uses. We promote small businesses, uh, and not just their growth, but also attracting them there in the first place. It leverages all the other kinds of investments that we're making, uh, and it connects, uh, this is important, uh, to, to make the connections between these neighborhood level efforts and all the wonderful creative assets in, in the city that we have, but we, we need to do more to support them. So we did an action agenda that you got a copy of. Um, and we, we started out uh, doing a lot of research to basically define what is this creative economy. You know, we know it's media. We know it's performing arts and museums. We know it's visual arts. Uh, but it's, but it's, it's also um, uh, digital arts. It's also culinary. Uh, we thought it might be a, an important part of the economy, but we had to inventory those assets and figure out uh, what they really added up to. The bottom line is that uh, you're big. Uh, you're, you're really big. You're, uh, you're powerful. It, it's important. You're 10% of all the employment in the District of Columbia. You're $5 billion in annual earnings, and you're growing. Uh, our creative enterprises include nonprofit cultural institutions, commercial businesses that produce and distribute creative products, thousands of th self-employed individuals, and that's a growing sector. Um, it, it means direct jobs in, in three different types of categories, non-creative workers and creative enterprises. That might be someone who does administrative work at an architectural firm or theater. It's a creative worker in a creative enterprise. That might be uh, an architect at an architecture firm. But it's also a creative worker in a non-creative enterprise. Uh, like, let's say you're, uh, you're a painter, but you're teaching at a university. Or you're an illustrator. You're working uh, at, at the courts. Uh, but it ends up being a really, really big number, 90,000 jobs in our economy. And what we found out about it as well is that it's, um, it, it's tightly linked to livability, because creative industries provide competitive advantages to other key industries. They serve a role attracting talent and visitors, strengthening neighborhoods, uh, inspiring people to be here. And, and we're starting to see it uh, have an effect in all of these sectors, in technology, in real estate, in hospitality, in retail. The bottom line is, is that in our city, creativity is driving innovation that then enables economies to become more uh, competitive. We think that our, our, our built-in asset of this dynamic creative economy actually has a huge role in attracting talent. Basically, um, we're a city that for the first time since the 1950s is growing. And we think it has a lot to do with the creativity and the innovation that's happening here. Um, not only w did we grow through the decade of the uh, between 2000 and 2010, but in the last 15 months, we grew by 2.7%, um, faster than any other state in the country. And even for the purposes of the District of Columbia, we haven't grown this fast since the wartime mobilization of the 1940s. Uh, people are really flooding into the city. And, and, and the people coming in are making the city more diverse. A lot of what they're attracted to is, uh, you know, is the, the creative 
part of the city and the creative occupations. The idea that you could come here and be an entrepreneur, that you could be, that you could be innovative. Um, it makes us a growing city. Our, our cool neighborhoods, our transportation choices, our social media, these are why people tell us they're coming here. And it's really an amazing transformation that you're helping to affect in Washington because most people know the District of Columbia as, uh, as kind of the, the, the Clark Kent city, the federal city, the seat of the federal government, you know, the place where, uh, where all those federal workers are. Wow, isn't that exciting? You know, not creative, not innovative, not, you know, not really anything. Bureaucratic, maybe that's the, the thing if you're, if you're from outside of the district that you might think about when you think about us. But in fact, you know, you're helping to create a real superhero identity for the city that's becoming much and much better known. And that's as a creative, vibrant, innovative place. And that is really tipping the balance for us as a city. It's opening up possibilities for the future that we've literally never had. And that evolving creative economy is centered around innovation. You know, people who are somewhat fearless, and I think, you know, this is a crowd of pretty fearless folks, who, who are absolutely willing to step out and create something that no one else has created before. Whether that's a small business, whether that's a work of art, whether that's a piece of performance. Um, and that growing base of, of creativity is making a, a huge difference. It's making a difference in our neighborhoods, where we now have dozens of additional neighborhoods that are fascinating, interesting, unique, uh, where people are dying to live. Um, it makes a difference in terms of, of the, the, um, the, even the, the companies that we have in the city. We have now more than 2,000 uh, technology startup companies in the district. And the people that we're attracting here, um, they're often really highly educated. We're a region that's more highly educated than any in the country, and the people that are moving here are even more highly educated. So all kinds of companies that had never thought of making DC their home um, are thinking, you know, the talent that I want to hire, that I want to attract, um, it's here in the District of Columbia. So I, you know, I want to be there. So these companies are coming in. Other companies are starting up. It's diversifying our employment. It's diversifying our economy. It's diversifying our jobs. Because in the creative economy, um, you know, there's a wide range of jobs. Even if um, the, the head of a company might have, might have a college degree or more than one. A lot of the people employed in a company, in a creative company, might have a, a full range of, of skills and abilities. And some of the jobs have very low barriers to entry, which is something that we need in our economy. We need a full range of jobs. We're becoming a place that, for a variety of, uh, of, uh, of things, uh, on a variety of fronts, we're becoming really well known, whether it's Digital Capital Week, whether it's uh, things like uh, our Sustainable DC initiative to make the district the most sustainable place uh, in the United States, whether it's something like Capital Bike Share, um, all of these things are becoming part of the brand that's, uh, that's the District of Columbia. Um, we're becoming a city of choice, and I think these, these, these things that you see on the street, the ways in which people travel, uh, even these sources of innovation in the government um, are, are signals that, uh, that we're becoming a more and more innovative and creative place. And the great thing about our transportation choices is it makes it cheaper and easier to live in the district. It makes it possible um, for, for people to spend a lot less money to get around. Um, and uh, we're a city that, because of those investments in transportation choices, instead of spending something like 20% of your income on transportation, uh, people in the district spend less than 10% of their income. And they can devote that other money to buying a ticket to, the, to a concert, to having a meal in a restaurant, to seeing a great performance. Uh, we're supporting um, all different kinds of ways uh, to use space in the district. And one of those collaborations is with the Cultural Development Corporation to look at uh, uh, basically uh, matchmaking between people who have vacant spaces and arts organizations who need those spaces. Because the idea is, in a city like ours, um, we can't afford to have vacant spaces that aren't being put to some kind of productive use. And with a growing cadre of creative, innovative companies and users, 
that there's no reason to ever have a vacant lot or a vacant storefront that couldn't at least be temporarily filled with something exciting and interesting and new and different that helps us to realize that superhero identity of being an innovative city. So some of those temporary arts uses um, you're going to start to see happening pretty quickly, including here uh, uh, east of the river in Anacostia. We're doing a project called Luminate Anacostia because we've got a grant from a new uh, public-private collaboration called Art Place. Um, and so we're creating four arts and culture temporiums, temporary uses of space in emerging creative neighborhoods, using vacant or underutilized storefronts, vacant lots, um, in some cases, this is going to be blocks and blocks of activity, uh, turning these places into artist showcases, artist villages for three to six months. We're doing them in Brookland, Anacostia, Deanwood, and Central 14th Street Northwest, beginning with Anacostia. We're creating a new spine right through the center of DC along the Green Line. Uh, attracting creative, innovative uses and, um, and, and people. We're attracting these, these, uh, uh, these new investments um, all along the Green Line, all the way from Petworth um, over to, uh, through Congress Heights. Uh, the Green Line uh, is, uh, is a place that uh, it, it is a series of, of of metro stops that basically have uh, run through the most underinvested parts of the city. But for those of you that have been here a while, well, there's probably been more change along the Green Line than any other part of the city, and it's been really remarkable. Places that have been for decades uh, pretty much um, uh, barren and underinvested in are now really thriving and bustling. And some of the most interesting things are happening there. The most interesting new restaurants, the most interesting creative new places, the most interesting performing arts venues are popping up there. And what we're seeing is that uh, jobs are starting to cluster along the Green Line, not just residents, and some of the most creative, innovative uh, workplaces. So the bottom line in the District of Columbia is that a creative DC means an innovative DC means a competitive DC. Um, and we're seeing that change everywhere, a place where your creative endeavors are a part of a larger effort that make a difference uh, in the economy, in the growth and vitality of the city, in its very diversity, um, and in the types of jobs that are available. You know, basically in the vitality of the streets, in the health of neighborhoods, you're shaping the future. Thank you.